between the episodes on Eisenholm. On the back of the previous episode, I harvested everything that was ready in the garden and got a second round of crops in. Then it was on to the forge to get another iron pickaxe ready. For safety, our lightning rods were raised up just a tad bit more onto some temporary blocks. Shout out to Fonda Bear for pointing out that there is an 8 block explosion radius around a lightning rod when it's struck by lightning, so this probably just saved Cutlet's life in the future. With rod safety secured, I decided to go on a bit of a hunt for meat, eventually stumbling down into a cave with a ruin. I took almost everything. Even the walls. Especially the walls. This wasn't simply loot goblin behavior though, oh no. I brought all of that conglomerate cobble and dry stone over to our gatehouse to begin building up the walls a bit. And soon enough, it was time. The piglets down south had arrived. Unfortunately, the in-laws were a little reluctant to sign the adoption papers, so somehow we suddenly had a bunch of meat out of nowhere. Imagine that. With two little piglets in tow, the clock was ticking to get them back to the stables. There's a 75% chance each of them could grow up to be a sow, which is exactly what we want. So only time will tell if the in-laws sudden and inexplicable disappearance will be an issue. With the piglets snug in their pen, my attention turned to more immediate food sources. I had meat, and the bees were buzzing. I harvested up a bunch of populated skeps for sweet, sweet honey, and put on a round of protein-rich meals. I'd use the wax from these honeycombs that we got to seal the crocs. Now we've got a few more long-term meals. In the morning, I put up a fairly simple fence around the entrance to the stables so Cutlet couldn't make a break for it in the future. Somehow, I didn't notice the sound of a nearby bear while building. Don't worry, that's foreshadowing. With things around the house taken care of for the moment, it was rock o'clock. We're going to need mountains of conglomerate in order to make any kind of headway on the castle, so the first of what will assuredly be dozens of quarrying trips began. Over a dozen big ol' slabs of rock later, the time had come to begin putting together a safe place to store and carve up all of this rock. The day of the masonry workshop is upon us, because that brings us to today, where we're going to put together a little stone cutter workshop, so we can deal with all of this stuff. Now for this stone cutting workshop, we're going to be using it to chisel a lot of the details that we'll be using over on yonder castle and pretty much everything else that we're going to be working on over the course of the series. So, I think an area close to the castle is going to be the best spot for it. So since for the time being, and the initial construction philosophy of this building is to supply the castle with all of the detailed stonework, we should just build it right on this little plot of land. And hopefully not be hit by lightning. It's close to the road. We'll have it inset a little bit here, and there's going to be other buildings eventually kind of along the path and around this little hill. But this will be somewhere far enough that it's not a defensive threat to the castle walls, but close enough that it's a convenient little trip to bring all of our chiseled blocks over to the walls. So I think let's start with getting a corner in right here. We'll kind of go out in these directions. Now I'm thinking the land is probably going to be raised up just to meet this level. But the floor of the interior will be this level here. So we're going to have it kind of step down once we come inside the building. So let's just get a little bit of a framework for the building set out. And there we go, we've got our general footprint all laid out. Now this is only going to be a one floor tall house. Uh, there might be a little bit of an attic space up top just for the sloped roof. But our front door is going to be right here. So we'll have our little step down into our recessed floor. And we come in here and this will be our main workshop studio area. 
Now back here, we'll have a whole series of trunks just for storing templates for our various chisel projects. That way, if we have a design that we're going to be repeatedly using over and over again, or we just need to have it for a template to apply onto a chisel block that we need to slightly adjust, we'll have copies here right on hand so we don't have to go take apart bits of walls and other such things. Plus, it's going to provide a safe place from the elements and uh, drifters while we're doing some very intricate chiseling projects. We won't have to worry about safety while we're building. So let's go get ourselves some supplies and get this thing going. Also, I don't know if you can hear the difference, but I'm using a different keyboard right now. And it's a lot quieter than uh, my usual keyboard, so... Yeah, perfect. I've got limestone. And granite, this is exactly what I wanted. Excellent. Where is rough cut chisel? That's what I want. Okay, 23 limestone rock was not what I was hoping for. Um, how much granite is this? 31 and a full stack. Perfect. So these are more going to be used to make some granite dry stone. Hmm. Get out of here, Flint. Perfect. Okay, do we have any granite rocks? Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Cluck. Please tell me we have granite stones. I'm not seeing any granite stones here. Granite. I'll put this flint away. Granite. Granite rock. Where are you? All I need is a little granite rock. Okay, I lied. I need more than a little. I kinda need a buttload. Do I have no granite stones? I see. I see. In my hubris, I think I believed I'd never need them. Huh. It's more conglomerate. <laughs> Perfect. I'm dual wielding hammers. That's kind of neat. All right, let's stick this in here. And I really didn't get that many stones. Oh boy. I don't think this is going to be nearly enough. I'm going to have to go on a big old hunt. And so the best way to do that is I'm going to pop on over, hopefully not fall into the lava hole as I run precariously straight towards it. But I'm going to go into our future workshop, which I believe is... Limestone, chalk, eritite, chalk, turns into granite, it turns into granite. We're just going to do this the old-fashioned way for a bit, just to get ourselves uh, a good, good collection of rock. Yeah. And since it seems as though we're going to have to do a uh, little bit of mining and a little bit of resource collection, just to be able to have the resources to put together this chiseling studio, Hopefully all in its entirety today. Let's do a little bit of a Saul Says What segment. Because we haven't done one in a long time. Welcome to Saul Says What. It's been a while since we've done one of these. So I'm thinking of doing slightly less per segment, but doing these segments a lot more often. So we'll have a Saul Says What segment in pretty much almost every episode, and I might limit it to maybe about five submissions per episode, just to keep things a little bit more manageable and get them out a little bit quicker, because these take a little bit longer to do than the regular editing process. And, uh, oh, it looks like the other me has something to say. Actually, I'm realizing that the rubble hammer is actually giving about the same rate as breaking these blocks manually. So let's just quarry out a whole bunch of granite slabs. Yeah. Back to Saul says what? Stop! You violated the law. Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. Your stolen goods are now forfeit. Then pay with your blood! I could revive the dead villagers with this wand of resurrection. But a magic caster who brings death, and a magic caster who can revive the dead, 
It's not hard to imagine which one would be dragged into more trouble. Unless that situation changes, you'll just have to be satisfied that I saved the village. Would you be happier had I a good reason? A test of your reflexes! How right I was to let you live. In this world, is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcendental entity or law? Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true that man has no control, even over his own will. Kip, this is good stuff. Write that down. Don't just sit up there in that stupid robot. You get down here and fight me like a man. I don't even know what you're angry about. You're imitating my voice. Everyone can hear it. We all know. Perhaps if I smoked 20 cigarettes first, but no. I don't think we sound the same at all. Well, I think we do. So get down here and fight me. No. Please? When life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Make life take the lemons back. Get mad. I don't want your damn lemons. What the hell am I supposed to do with these? Demand to see life's manager. Make life rue the day it thought it could give Cave Johnson lemons. Do you know who I am? I'm the man who's going to burn your house down. With the lemons. I'm going to get my engineers to invent a combustible lemon that burns your house down. Alright, let's pop these in here. I may have gone slightly overboard. You know what? Probably not, actually. Probably going just the right amount of board. Not over. Not under. Just right. Three stacks? That should be enough to start. Let's not forget the lantern. Now before I go too far into this, there's one teensy little detail I'm going to want to do to this, but I think, I think we'll save it for a little bit. I do want to have the outside of this be the granite dry stone with a little bit of coining on the corners of a, a little bit of limestone brick. But on the inside, I want to do a lime wash. So the internal side of all of these structural blocks are going to be plaster. But that could take a little bit to put together the plaster, so let's just get the base structure in place at the beginning, and we'll do the detail work after. for the floor here. Let's just start digging around the perimeter. I've got a plan for the main workspace. It's a little unorthodox, but I think it'll work well especially for a chiseling space. Now the limestone that we've got here, it's going to make for a nice just solid, flat ground. The walls are going to be, well, they're going to be white eventually, but nice, plain, simple, stony room. And that is going to be a little bit more limestone that I'm going to need, and I am out. Okay. There we go. I'll just trust that this should... Ooh, hoo 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 Lantern... I will just trust that 34 will be enough to finish this little ring and whatever we've got. Eh, it might not be enough for in there as well. Twenty, and I've got a one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Five by five. So everything except for this one strip. You know what? I could I'll leave this strip, and then I can decide if I want a, uh, a visual break. 
Yeah. Yeah, I could always put something different here. I might have a bit of an arch uh, going into the section that'll have all of our trunks. So I'm not too worried about not having enough limestone at the moment. Here, I can always quarry more. But sometimes limitation breeds creativity. I was going to say something philosophical, and my mind went blank. So let's carry on building. All right, well, out of stone once again. Remember how I said the bear sounds were foreshadowing? This is when I find out. As I was looking through chests in the farmhouse trying to find the perfect little fence for our entryway into the stone cutting workshop, I heard it. I couldn't tell where it was coming from, but I went in search of the source of the noise. And to my dismay, the bear had gotten into our sheep pen, and I didn't know, and apparently it had been there so long that a moose got in there too at some point. So either things are just naturally spawning inside there because I've left it as grass, or things are coming in, although I don't think a moose can climb three blocks, so that might have just been an unfortunate circumstance, and I'm going to have to change that floor. I got rid of it, but we're going to need some new sheep. I'm just glad the dividing wall over to the pigs is more than three blocks tall, so the bear couldn't get to Cutlet. That could have been a bit of a disaster. Let's do some detail. Ah, get out of my way, dirt. 
should have used that road I built. And that is almost the look we're going for. But I forgot my planer. I'm just gonna go run over and grab that. I'm going back and forth. Can't bring everything in one trip, that'd be too easy. All right, so we're going to inset by one voxel all of the granite dry stone just to give a little bit of depth to the coining on the sides here on the edges rather yeah and now i just gotta do this on all of the corners of the building and probably either around the entirety or at least just above the windows Maybe just above the windows. Yeah. And you might be asking yourself, Solston, why don't you just do this in a nice time lapse? Well, I would. Okay. My laptop is still packed away after my little road trip. So, yeah. I don't like that he's watching me like that. And doesn't that look already? So much better. Got a lot more depth to it. Ah, hold on. That isn't proper. There we go. Sure, it might be a little lopsided having a big stone there and a small stone there, but keeping it to only a singular brick along the corner just for consistency. Nice. Now I just gotta do the rest of the corners and the windows and we'll probably save some of the other details for later, but I'm gonna do the other corners and above the other windows. And one day we're going to have to finish the roof, but that's not today. Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be a slate trip. We're entirely out of slate. And there we have it. Some of the detail all in place. Now I am going to put a little front patio area there. Uh, just once the uh, amount of fire clay bricks that we have are no longer as useful for bloomeries. Once I can spare a few, pop them in there. Maybe if we can find some iron fences, the top specifically. Those will look nice for a little, uh, little fenced off patio outside the front door. Maybe put a little awning there, who knows? We'll see how things go. Now, whatever you do, don't ask to see the back of the build. I pulled a green. Little unfinished back here. I've got some of the extra supplies. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll work on that later. <laughs> but for now, we're going to use this building for its intended purpose and do something with all of this conglomerate. So I'm going to pop over back onto yonder farmhouse and grab a few of the things that we're going to need. Hello, baby chickens. Run from me. Run from me in fear. Abuga bugu. You know what? All of the chiseling related tools, including a uh, almost dead hammer, we're going to take those with us and we may as well take these tool racks. Could I make more? Yes. Will I? Eventually. 
Okay, now what do I need? Right, I need a great deal of things. I need all the conglomerate I can get. Where? Do I not have any more conglomerate? I feel like I knew this before and I forgot. All right, well, what's that? Bony soil. I guess I got all I got. Ignore that thing. You don't see it. Dang it, it's night. I should probably cook another meal, I think. Just meat and turnip. Why not? Just to keep that heat from dropping too fast, let's... I think we can spare one more peat. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna have to find a place to store all that peat. Speaking of storage, do I have... I remember seeing some nails and strips, but I can't remember if I used them or popped them in a chest somewhere. There they are. And some maple boards. All right, let's just do this whole little bit of business there and we'll just bring this pot of cooked food with us why not and onward we go into the dark of the night realizing I didn't light up the inside of the the new build hmm our safe chiseling studio may not be that safe of a chiseling studio although this one lantern might just do the trick We'll have to see. And our our <laughs> our lovely storage begins with a single chest. Now eventually I do want to have two uh, two trunks side by side on each layer here. So that's gonna give us eight on this wall, eight on this wall, and then eight right in the center as well. And oh we are surrounded by drifters by the sounds of it, or at least one. There he be. There, that boy. That's okay. They hopefully shouldn't be able to get in here. So, I think with a lot of these, I'm going to need a lot of polished. Let's burn through the last of this iron hammer, because we've got this other one here. Here's my chisel. There we go. I'm okay with that. Let's turn ten of them into these guys. Just to give us a little bit of that dry stone, we'll get a bunch of cobble from copious amounts of conglomerate mining. So we'll have that for texturing and then we'll use this other stack. Oh, wait, we've got a little bit more. We are gonna need to make some cobblestone, but the dry stone for now. So first off, here's a demonstration of what we're going to be using this space for. Let's pop our tool racks there, and let's clear out a few of these. There we go. So there's going to be quite a few designs going onto our walls, and this is where we're going to have templates. The reason I made this floor in such a way is we can't chisel the floor. We can definitely break them if we left click, but if we right click and we're chiseling, we're not gonna take out a chunk of anything. Yes, thank you, Drifters, for your social commentary. Anyway, with these, there are three different variations to our standard column that we're going to want. So from the center there, we're going to want to go out and take out those two. How do I know that's the center? I guessed. And those little grooves in there are going to be quite prevalent across a lot of, well, basically these uh, these polished corner pillars. It'll it'll make a bit more sense as we go. For the moment, I'm gonna remove this table and just pop it off to the side there. 
and we're gonna pop a couple more of these on here. So first, I'm going to finish chiseling this pattern onto all four sides, or all four, you know, facing sides of this middle block. That's way quicker. Oh, there we go. And then we're just gonna take the old pantograph here and we're going to copy the shape and we're gonna paste the shape onto here but then we're going to fill in the bottoms these are gonna act as the bottom portions for these column designs so these are going to butt up against pieces that don't have these little grooved inlets and so we want to uh, want the edge to just be a little bit cleaner now we're going to do the same thing on that to this one just the uh, the filled in portions will be up at the top but what we can do for that is if we copy that and paste that shape we can take the hand wedge mirror block and there we go. Aim at the top and mirror to reverse it and basically put the bottom on the top, which now gets us what we want. And we'll just remove a voxel, add a voxel. And what that does, that helps fix most lighting glitches that come from using the Chisel Tools mod. So now we have our three basic columns. And a nice thing with the pantograph here is we have an option to rename a block. How do I rename a block? <gasps> oh! All I had to do was save one, and then the portfolio showed up. Oh, happy day! This is gonna be beautiful. Oh, this might save me from having to store a bunch of templates in here, but I built this entire building specifically to save templates for highly used chiseled blocks, so I'm 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 gonna use it. Ah, I've got it, it's on there. Oh this is oh this is awesome. Okay. This is great. Oh, Ah, there we go. And then call a middle. And I can rename these, which is going to be a little bit easier if I have named templates. Ah, this is good. This is good. I like this. Life is good. There we go. Ah. And I think... As long as that's saved in our pantograph, we may not even have to come back for for these templates. We can just have them for posterity. Oh boy. There's a few more pieces we'll need before we can get our wall fully detailed, but let's get a little bit, just, just a little bit, of one of our wall sections in place. For that, we're probably going to need to burn through the last of our, uh, our rubble hammer here. Do we have room? We have room. Let's get as many of these rocks as we can and make a whole bunch of cobblestone. All right, well, there goes our rubble hammer. That's okay. We got a good-ish bit of uh, conglomerate stone. So let's pop some of these tools away out of our inventory because we're not really going to need... Everything here, I don't think. Go grab ourselves a little bit of clay. Woo! Alright, away from the door, chickens. I'm coming in. Stop teaching your children to run near the door. You know how dangerous the outside world is? I'm out there. And I'm crazy. I'll eat you. Where'd I put my clay? I put my clay in the thing out here. I'm a silly, silly man. There we go. 
Let's go build ourselves a segment of wall. Right, I was kind of part way through building some of this. I've taken a road trip since uh, since I did this, so it's been a been a bit of a minute. Here, right here. Let me let me let me just get a little bit of a one, two, three, four, five. So each wall segment is going to be five blocks wide. And we're going to build these up to be seven tall above the, uh, well, kind of a leveled baseline. And then with the elevation changes, everything below that is just going to have a little bit of a buttress coming off of it and just extend on down. But we're measuring seven from a, basically from the ground level inside of the kill box here. Or the barbican as it's called. Because you're going to need to see a barber after. Because they were surgeons back then. You even lived through getting through the gatehouse. <laughs> this one? Not a chance. Well, maybe how it is right now, but later on, no. Okay, so with that bottom layer, this here, this, this layer, is going to be technically layer number one. So in order to denote that, we're going to have these sit like so. And these conglomerate polished rocks are just going to remain as uh, conglomerate polished rocks. And now we're going to go... Put away my pantograph. I'm a fool of a took. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And break my ankles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll just do the same one on here. So we've got our uh, one, a two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. And we'll just do that. And then we'll just fill in the whole wall. And break our ankles once again. I'll fill it all in properly a little bit later on, but for demonstration purposes, we've got our wall. I'm gonna grab the pantograph and kind of give a little bit of a demonstration. We won't have every piece, because I'm gonna have to do a lot more chiseling, but we're gonna get there. Just you wait and see. Maybe not today, or maybe not tomorrow, but soon, and for the rest of our lives. So are the days of our lives. Oh, right. Uh, let's just start putting slabs of stone in here. So, that one, we are going to have that as column bottom. I'm going to need to use a ladder here. There we go. And then we're going to do Three column middles. And we're just going to need to raise this ladder up a little bit so we can reach. And these two, column top. Now there's going to be some curved kind of arch pieces in here as well as uh, some triangular ones. Uh, you know what? Here, here's a depiction. This is kind of the idea that I'm going for here. So yeah, we're at least beginning to get uh, get a little bit underway on that. It'll all come together in time. And oregano. Uh, why am I like this? Oh, this is gonna be beautiful. Oh, I can't wait to see it all come together. Let's turn a lot of these into bricks. The lack of a proper floor, I'm getting the, uh, the safety dirt layer confused with where the floor is, so let's start getting the floor in where we can. Oh, I have so much conglomerate stone in there.
you have a home now. Come with me to the studio. Excellent. All right. So, I think packed dirt might actually be good for a lot of the central area here. If it's a high traffic walkway, having kind of a worn path in here, I'm just going to meander some pieces here and occasionally add maybe a little bit of regular dirt in and around it. Especially going more into the, the sides and, and everything like that. Uh, there might be let me do some low fertility in the middle there a little bit, but for the most part, a lot of this is going to be pretty well just packed dirt. And that at least is a start. I'm going to need a lot more in there. I've got more back at the house, but we'll uh, we'll figure that out. But for here, this is going to be our floor level. That means we can remove this cobblestone right here. And that one. Because we're going to have a nice little walkway inside of all the walls. Let's grab our lantern from in here. There we go. Make this place no longer safe and a uh, good old spawnable area once again. Well, I'd say today's been a fairly productive day. Got a whole bunch of quarrying done, built ourselves a little sculpting studio, and got a little bit of work done on the gatehouse slash uh, the beginnings of one wall segment. So I think that might just do it for today. Uh-oh. We're uh, kind of forced inside because of those guys out there. So from in the safety of our sculpting studio, thank you so much for watching. Hi, Drifter. <laughs> And a special shout out to all of our channel members. Thank you all so much. I'll see you all in the next video. Good night. Goodbye. Sleep tight. Don't sleep loose. It's dangerous. You hear that, drifters? Don't sleep loose. You hear what happens when someone sleeps loose? Yeah? How do you like being a cautionary tale? window head phasing looking guy Ooh, I'll give you a, something to phase about <laughs>